Welcome to episode 5 of Better With Books. I'm Roots. Today I'll be talking about the book Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I'll be completely honest with you. At the time of this recording, I haven't yet finished the book. But that's okay, because if you haven't noticed, I don't do book reviews. I talk about books. The things in them that I think are important. The things that they make me think about. But let me just preface by saying, yes, it's a good book. In fact, it's just as amazing as you've heard it is. It's going to be a classic. It's brilliant. It's worth every second you spend reading it. It has just the right balance of story and characters and intrigue and teenagers' philosophical monologues. The world will be quoting it forever. It explores what it means to be young, and it delves into the finer details of what it's like to live with obsessive-compulsive disorder, which, many people seem not to understand, is an actual disorder, something that negatively impacts the lives of those who have it. It's not a character trait, not something that makes you a neat freak or a germaphobe. In fact, what I just said about what OCD is not, I think that's what this book is going to be remembered for. As a society that has long misinterpreted and misused the words obsessive compulsive disorder in that order, we needed to read this book. We needed to understand that it is actually a disorder. It is something so strong and uncontrollable in the lives of some people that they cannot function normally, or if they can, it takes great effort on their part. Write what you know, they said. And John Green did that. And in the process, he created a masterpiece of language and life. He showed us what it's like to be controlled by your own uncontrollable thoughts. That is by far the most impressive quality of this book. Green's ability to put us inside a 16-year-old girl's head to the point where we are feeling her panic, helplessness, and fear with her. He described what it's like to be unsure of who you are, whether you even exist. He made his readers, at least for a little while, to feel as helpless and tangled up as the protagonist of his story. And he's made his readers, he certainly made me, consider their own fears. I think all his books do that, but this one especially in how it explores the idea that we are not in control, even of our own thoughts. So listen. All the ways we misuse the term OCD are about to end, because I'm here to tell you that when we say OCD, most of us, most of the time, are actually talking about OCPD, Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder, which is something I have. It is like OCD, but without the internal torture, without the incontrollable thoughts and thought spirals. It's more like just the outside stuff, the cleanliness, the anal habits, Lots and lots of habits, actually. I don't think there's anything in my life that I haven't turned into a habit. And that sort of makes me the most inflexible person I know. If I think about the fact that I just passed the sofa and one of the pillows is crooked, I can't leave the room without first turning back to straighten the pillow, even if it looked like it might have been just a centimeter off. When I was a kid, this OCPD manifested itself in me worrying a lot. For a while, I was obsessed with this fear that our house would burn down, and I'd go over in my mind exactly what I'd do if there ever were a fire, step by step what I'd grab, who I'd call out to. When I was about 12, every night before going to sleep, I'd get out of bed and walk through the house and do a check-double-check of exactly eight different things in the house, like, are the doors locked, the windows closed, the gas stove off? But these things I grew out of, and as it stands in my life now, having OCPD is like being an overachiever on steroids. It's like I can rarely sit down and relax. I don't think I even know how to relax, because there's always something more useful to be doing. Working ahead on assignments, cleaning the house, reorganizing, rearranging, reorganizing and rearranging again. Because nothing is ever really perfect, is it? This book showed me how lucky I am, and how thankful I should be that there is that extra letter in what I have. I can't go without giving you guys a couple quotes, of course, and this book is chock full of quotes. I'm telling you, you will highlight the heck out of this book. Here's my favorite. I is the hardest word in the world to define. Okay, here's my two cents. 
Maybe we're not meant to define I. Maybe we are who we are, the I is already there, and we're instead meant to define what it means to be I, what it means to be given the gift of life, what it means to create and give and love. Maybe I isn't anything at all. Maybe it's just an empty jar, and we're supposed to fill it up with whatever we want to fill it up, or simply whatever we have to fill it up with. Here's one that describes a thought spiral. You tell yourself that you were careful not to touch the water, but yourself replies, but what if you touch something that touched the water? And then you tell yourself that this wound is almost certainly not infected. But the distance you've created with the almost gets filled by the thought you need to check for infection. I love it. It's so accurate. Almost is a very, very powerful word when you think about it. Last one. When you're on a Ferris wheel, all anyone ever talks about is being on the Ferris wheel, and the view from the Ferris wheel, and whether the Ferris wheel is scary, and how many more times it will go around. Dating is like that. Nobody who's doing it ever talks about anything else. I have no interest in dating. So since reading that quote, I've challenged myself, and I challenge you, try not talking about the Ferris wheel next time you're on one. Hey guys, I hope you noticed how much better this episode sounds, thanks to my new Blue Yeti microphone. As always, you can get in touch with me on Twitter at RootsMac, and if you have a moment, please head over to iTunes and leave a rating there. Talk to you all in the next one. Peace.